You're watching the Original Music Podcast with your hosts Raymond Hems and Rick Gathman. All right, here we go. Uh, in this episode tonight, we have uh, Against the Fold. They're uh, uh, a prog rock, uh, hard rock metal band out of Atlanta. Um, and uh, uh, they sent me their, their information the other day, and I listened to their material, and it's like, oh, yeah, let's get these guys on. So uh, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Good. Good to have you guys on. Um, so Against the Fold, uh, you, out of the Atlanta area, are you, uh, you know, in town, uh, inside the perimeter, outside the perimeter? Where are you guys located? Uh, we're, we're OTP. I mean, we live in various OTP areas. We rehearse in Roswell, though. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, we're right up here. In, we're in coming um, just up the road from you. Um, probably, I don't know, 10 minutes away. That's awesome. Uh, who who yeah. has who has the luxury of having uh, everybody at their house to record and play? Oh, that'd be me. Yeah. yeah. You, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, today. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, it's Paul's yeah. place. <laughs> yeah, but for rehearsals it, and stuff. To, whose house do you guys go to for rehearsals? That would be mine. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you have a, a basement type setup where you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you guys have all. And when you rehearse, drums, bass, guitars, and PA, yes. Yeah, so you guys are doing uh, live amps and that kind of stuff, huh? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Old school. Yeah, that's awesome. How do how do your neighbors feel about that? It's actually surprisingly quiet when you stand out on the street. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, I got I got the windows covered up with foam to uh, eliminate noise. Nice. Yeah, that's kind of the old school way as well. Um, what what we do is you you can see here we. I do everything with in ears, and uh, you know we use a, a electric kit. I'm using Kempers. Uh, we're using you know uh, the Doug Pennick preamps, and so we literally can have a rehearsal and be silent, except for us wow. grunting, grunting and groaning while we're playing. You know, <laughs> like what's that sound? All you hear from upstairs is <clears throat> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, let's get into the kind of the background of the band uh, against the. Against the fold, um, what where'd the name come from, and does it have a a meaning behind it? Anything? Yeah, it's those those goddamn paper airplanes that we just cannot stand. <laughs> We're getting, no, sorry. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I I actually am a new member, so I have to refer to them on this. Yeah, one. who came up with it? Yeah, Frank. Frank. Frank is the author of, or the inventor of the name. Okay. Would you like to? Yeah, well, basically, I mean, the real story because I have many fake ones is that a fold is. What you call a group of sheep. Oh yeah. So it's about be going against the grain. It's like against the sheep mentality of following the herd, regardless. Wow, that that is the true meaning of a, of a name. Um, but, yeah. Right. Although although I play poker on the side and I do know a lot of guys that are against the fold, so that's one of the uh, fake uh, side stories. <laughs> yeah. it, it's to some extent fold. you can kind of kind of put your own meaning on it if you if you like. Yeah. It's, I, I like that though, going against the grain and not following the, like you said, the sheep mentality is, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's not my in my in my blood to be that way either, obviously. But uh, uh, how long have you guys been a band? I'd say so. I'd say this this particular band began uh, maybe five years ago. Nine seventeen. Really? Okay, so five or six years ago. Um, actually, Paul is is relatively new. The band was founded by our original drummer, who also was a singing drummer, and we do a lot of harmonies uh, and a lot of tunes together. Uh, Steve, uh, he is retired. He got some suffered from pretty bad tinnitus in his ears, so yeah. he needed to he needed to hang it up. And we were fortunate enough to just put a Craigslist ad out and yeah. very quickly find Paul, who had recently moved to town yeah to find another drummer who can play this stuff and sing and write it was uh kind of miraculous yeah i i would imagine you know craigslist has always been kind of one of those hit or miss you know kind of things um you know that band mix is one that i've used in the past and that's how i met my my bass player in one of my bands and um yeah you really it's it's kind of like uh but Forrest Gump, you, 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 it's a box of chocolates. You don't know what's gonna, what you're going to get when they show up to your house. <laughs> Absolutely. Kind of a needle in a haystack in my experience. Yeah. <laughs> and, and listening to your music, it's not, 
uh, it's not straight four on the floor type of drumming either. There's some pretty intricate stuff, yeah? Yeah, well, it was interesting because this, well, this was one of the tunes that probably was kind of sitting on the shared drive, had a couple of recordings of it, you mm -hmm. know, and, and so uh, versus some of the ones that have been around for a while, uh, you know, I think a lot of what I did on some of those was Steve basically had the core of it, but then I just put my kind of my own stamp on it and spiced up a few things. And but this one, I really got to, you know, hey, what's the drum track I really want to put to it? Um, when when we pulled it out and started started uh, started trying to be uh, serious about this particular tune. Yeah, yeah, and and I did notice that you guys were saying, uh, you know, you're not afraid to throw the word prog uh, on what your music is, um, and I like that because uh, Rick always gets on me. He's like. You can all say Giza is gone is, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a classic rock kind of thing with the cinematic thing going. He's like, no, it's prog, dude. And uh, uh, do you guys experiment with, uh, you know, time signature changes and that, and that kind of stuff? I know it's got an edge. Uh, do you guys like to do that type of thing? Yeah, actually, the uh, the track with the video, Never Be Free, has an ending that has multiple time signature switching. I think it switches five, six. Five, five, eight, six, eight, wow. then seven, eight, nine, eight. Yeah, what was the what were the numbers you told me? Just remember. It's actually five, six, five, six, seven, six, five, 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 seven, six, <laughs> yeah. nine. So yeah, yeah. That, that took a bit for me. Like, wait a minute, what the hell are you doing? Like, yeah, that sounds like a yeah. phone it's, number. It's funny. We definitely clearly have some prog influences, but we've we've struggled to know how exactly how to how to market ourselves because yeah. you know when you when you listen to like a really proggy band. We're not we're not that aggressively uh, off kilter, I and mean, I feel like we 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 aim for more accessibility with yeah. plot prog flourishes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I've known Chris since '89. Just about, yeah. And back then we were, and still to this day, we're huge Queens Rike and Fates Warning fans. Ah, so you. we're kind of more old school prog. Yeah, yeah, influence. yeah. It, it's. Are you guys, by chance, side note, are you, are you, do you guys happen to be going to the Dream Theater show? I think it's July. Uh, anybody anybody have their... Is this the new, like, little festival that they've got going? I don't, I don't know, but I, uh, if you want to talk about Prague, the reason I'm sure. going, the reason I'm going is a band called Animals as Leaders is, oh, yes. is playing with them. Uh, and, and that's a band that, that, in my opinion, is, like, modern Prague. I mean, that, they, those guys are insanely talented. Yeah, I saw them at the masquerade. They definitely are. Yeah. No, they're 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 badass. Yeah. Yeah, there's certain there's certain bands though that I I just can't go see because the drummer just makes me cry and feel yeah. so horrible about myself. So I I can't go see Mangini play. I, <laughs> it, it, it pretty much would just put me in the basement crying for a couple of weeks. Right. I think you know. Well, that that's actually a good point because um uh one of one of the things I like to ask you know, bands and, and players, especially, uh, like I'll do the same thing. I'll just be on my, on a, my socials and a reel will come across with a 13 year old kid doing some wizardry on the guitar. And I'm like, well, what am I even trying to do this for? I mean, that, <laughs> you know, that's the level of the talent that's coming up. This it's insane. You know? So when you see players like that, um, uh, especially when they're 13 or, or eight, uh, is it, it it's is it inspiring or depressing? No, it's it, it's definitely inspiring. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, I say it kind of in jest, but you know, I, I love to see. Uh, actually, we just played with a good band from uh, uh, Nashville, right? Over the Nashville, yeah, yeah, Nashville over the weekend, and and uh, it was kind of one of those where actually it was billing where you know, I mean, being a drummer, it was like I think all three drummers are pretty good. So you get to kind of talk about like, oh, I figured out what your favorite fill is because, man, you like you stick it in every, you know, so just compare a couple of notes like, you know, in between the shows. So that's always cool to kind of see other players and yeah, what's what's a couple of the things you could pick up from them and incorporate later on. Yeah. And, and that that's important, too, is like uh, the camaraderie in, in, in the if you have a green room, um, being able to talk shop and the other people yeah. actually understand what you're talking about. Uh, you know, like I'll be around uh, at, at work and be start talking about, you know, string gauges on strings and tunings and, and all this. And they're like, what are you talking about? You know, so it is fun when you're around like minded people talking about uh, yeah. the same you type. Find your that community. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say that it's, yeah, it's rock what you guys are doing. It might be a little bit of a, uh, kind of a proggy thing, but what, what, what were your influences that got you to where you guys are? Um, uh, Frank, uh, this sounds like it's, you know, you've been in the kind of the band since the beginning. What were some of your influences growing up? Uh, you know, what was, what, what got you going on the guitar? All right, well, I'm, I'm going to start with uh, the period when I met Chris, where we were we were in an original band called uh, Early Warning, uh, based out of the rec room, as a matter of fact, you mentioned the shirt earlier. And back then, we were big into uh, Queensryche, Fate Warning, Maiden, yeah. uh, Maiden being my favorite band, uh, and Metallica. Oh, yeah. So th those were the influences that, at the time, me, Chris, and the other two guys in that band were big on, and that was kind of like the joint. I mean, there's some little influences on the side that add a little extra flavor, but those were the main ones. And you said that was 87? Um, 89. 89. Um, yes. so, so how old were you when you first started playing guitar? I would say 14. Oh, yeah. That's about the same as me. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't quite as good as those 14-year-olds that yeah. we see now. Well, <laughs> well, and there's a reason for that. They had yes. YouTube... We had cassette decks and vinyl that we had to go rewind, rewind, play, rewind, play, you know. Um, That's true. The well, yeah, but I mean, I'll give you an exception. Are you familiar with uh, the band, a band called Puya? Uh, say that name again. Puya, P-U-Y-A. They're a Puerto Rican band. They played, uh, they're, a me they're a metal land band. Okay. And... Right. Uh, Ramon, their guitar player, was a beast at 14 years old. Right. So, I mean, I didn't see him on YouTube. I saw him because I knew him from high school. But, right. I mean, he's, a, he said sure. he's endorsed by Dean Guitars, and so he's well-known. And at 14, they, 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 they are players like that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, there's always, yeah, there's, there's exceptions. Yes. Yes. But, you know, Frank, Frank definitely was, has always been, still is into a lot of the you know, the shrapnel records guys mm -hmm. and a lot of that as well. And so it definitely, um, Paul Gilbert and Steve yeah. Vai. And, uh, yeah. Well, Steve Vai was another one that was very young and very good. Uh huh. Yeah. We actually, we had the back in the way back in the early nineties, we, we had the honor of opening for Steve Vai, uh, back then wow. at the mass, at the old masquerade. Wow. That was, a. Uh, Probably the biggest crowd we ever got to play for. That was that was pretty fun. So that was probably the masquerade that was uh, on Peachtree. Was yeah, it on the uh, Avenue? Like Excelsior Mill. Oh, actually, I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about um, uh, the Cotton Club. That was oh, on, yeah, 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 yeah that was on Peach. Yeah, we play there too. We did that place, yeah. Yeah, so now you're talking about the masquerade that was uh, that was in the mill, that big yep, yep. building with the crazy hoist lift. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when it was when a packed house, you could feel the floors flexing, and you just thought it was, you know, at any moment it could cave in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you I know, still miss it. Yeah. I played I, a couple frat parties that way. Yeah. <laughs> because the jumping started, and then the floor was you know, going, oh, we're all in the basement in like the next thirty seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that was back when uh, that was back when the, they just let people rock and 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 uh, you know go to shows and. That I felt that bouncing thing in the balcony of the tabernacle once, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and, and I was like, didn't they have to shut it down temporarily to repair some things? I would, make, yeah, I would imagine not kill anyone a hundred year, hundred year old building or more. I don't know, it's, it's yeah. pretty old. So, so you guys have been playing around Atlanta for, for quite a while to, to be to have been playing some of those clubs. You remember when Buckhead, remember when Buckhead was actually you know a music scene and and the place to go. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I have a funny uh, story. Uh, back then, I had long hair. Yeah. And still had facial hair. And me and him were in Buckhead, and there was a really drunk guy who was convinced. In Buckhead? In Buckhead, yes. What? Clarence Foster's. Oh, yes. And this kid was convinced that I was Vinnie Paul from Pantera. <laughs> Hanging out in Buckhead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I told him, no, I'm not him. And he's like, hey, you don't want to talk to me. You don't have to be an asshole about it, Vinnie. Oh wow! Hey, hey, could he not tell from your accent that you may might not be him? You might not be from Texas. <laughs> you oh, might my, yeah. my, yeah. my southern part of Texas. The accent was worse now then. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Buckhead was a crazy place. Uh, uh, you know, all kinds of different uh, music venues, um, dance clubs. The uh, what was the Brazilian dance place that was uh, right across from CJ's Landing? Uh, what was that called? Oh, you it, mean Havana Club? That, yeah, I think it was the Havana oh, Club. Yeah, that's a good place. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was fun. Uh, but it was an interesting mix of of all types of different uh, musics and peoples, and 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 I don't know, it just turned into what shopping or something. That, what is Buckhead now? Yeah, it's the high rent district. That's pretty much what. Yes, it is. that's yeah. pretty much what it is. I think yeah. being, being an out of towner, you can see that right away. Yeah, and how long have you been in town? Paul? Uh, it'll be three years in June since we moved down here. Wow. And you came from where? Jersey? Uh, New Jersey. Yeah. What part of Jersey yeah. were you in? So we were in the north, uh, the north, what is it, northwest part of it. So kind of out in the sticks, closer to Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, we've got some, I've got some in law uh, extended family in Jersey. And, you know, people say New Jersey, you think about, you know, kind of the city area. Uh, but Jersey is a ton of farmland, and yeah, that's that's kind of where we were. Was everyone thinks so? There's one drive when you're coming up, approaching New York City from the south, and you're going through New Jersey. And there's refineries off to the left, and abandoned warehouses to your right. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what people think of when they think of New Jersey. It's that yeah. whole Newark approach, you know. Yeah. But there's there's lots of parts <laughs> of it. You know, it's probably true of every state in the country, right? There's 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 parts of it that are you know completely different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So since we're talking to Paul here, um, what what were your influences growing up? I mean, we all got here somehow, as far as you know, having the need to play music. And for me, anyway, I I don't have a choice. I, I have to do this uh, for my mental sanity. But you know, how how did you how did you get to where where, where you're at now? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I didn't quite like, well, I actually like Queens right now, but some of the stuff that, that these guys like, I discovered probably a little bit later. I was, I was probably more of your, um, Van Halen and, you know, Rat and Motley Crue and all, you know, those kind of hair bands when I was younger and, um, you know, just kind of really got into it, had some friends that were really into it. And, um, you know, I, and I guess for me, I didn't start playing drums till I was like 18, uh, but I started playing trumpet when I was in like fourth grade and oh, yeah. played that, you know, all the way through, put myself through college, you know, on my trumpet and scholarship and all that. And wow. so, um, but interestingly enough, when we picked instruments in fourth grade, what do you want to play? I want to play the drums. And my parents were like, oh, you're not playing the drums. Yeah, not you know, a so, chance. So it, so it took me about another, I don't know, eight eight grades before, you know, I had a couple of friends at school and then, oh, you guys are in a band? Cool. Like, yeah, but we don't have a drummer. Like I'll be your drummer. They're like, have you ever played drums? I was like, no. I'll figure it out. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> bought a kit, and I think right at that time, it, it was about nine months after that band, which was called Your Mom, by the way. Uh -huh. we, we, it was very sophomoric high school band. We thought yeah. it was the funniest thing ever, where it'd be one night only, Your Mom. Yeah. You know that that was like. I actually know, like I like that quite a bit. Yeah, yeah I so do you too. Had, the, the mindset was that we thought that was the most hilarious thing. But, you know, so right around that time was when, like, the Black Album from Metallica came out. Yeah. And, you know, so, and I'd been listening to And Justice for All and, and some of that stuff. So I'd had kind of, you know, hair band and that whole thing, but then moving into some of the heavier stuff. And so, I mean, to this day, I'm like a big Anthrax fan, a big, you know, Testament fan. And yeah. some of those, Maiden is another one. And, you know, I think my, my favorite one that's more recent is Atreyu. Um, probably one of my favorite bands, and they just put on a, just a killer live show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those those are some of them. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, have you guys have you guys thought about um, putting putting some of Paul's trumpet in your tracks anywhere? Uh, we haven't discussed that. Although you know, Paul had recorded. I mean, when you know he answered our ad, he had some recorded music that he shared with us, and it was like, all right. Wow, I mean, you 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 know how it is when you're when you're trying to shop for bandmates. Yeah. When someone really has their act together, it stands out yeah. like a sore thumb, and compared to you know a lot of the, the responses you get, 
but he has trumpet playing mixed in with like metal music on on his uh yeah. on this recording and it was super cool so it could return i just don't know how he's going to play drums yeah it's a little, yeah, it's a little well that time. that particular project was god i started it in 2008 i guess yeah and i, I it was kind of one of these things where i'm like you know what? I want to I want to write an album, and I'm going to do all the instruments and sing. Uh, that's what that, I that was the goal. Like yeah. I want to do it. You know, so it just kind of started that way. So like you know, nine. So I probably wrote like I don't know, eighteen songs and whittled it down to like nine. And yeah, I have a buddy that actually built his house way out in the sticks in New Jersey, and he's a, a professional drummer that does like union gigs in the city. And yeah. so he built a whole studio on the back end of his house. And so you know, for months and months, it was. What are you doing this Saturday? I'm going to the studio for five hours, yep. you know, and, and recording. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and we actually do what we do one of the tunes uh, from that project in in this band, which is which is really cool for me. We got to actually like pick something up from that project and play yeah. it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that we're done mining yeah. that. Uh, yeah, that project. There, there's a lot of good songs on there. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You listen to stuff that you. I mean, I do personally listen to stuff I did. 20 years ago and i'm like hey that that actually wasn't half bad dang you know i just didn't know how to record it properly back then but right. you know the trumpet thing could definitely be like in your recordings now um you know and then uh, do you guys consider possibly using tracks live and having that trumpet track you know playing or or are you guys just power trio let's go kind of a kind of a thing yeah, probably the latter. I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> myself, I'm very old school, meaning that if you're not playing it, it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm i not totally against the idea of, of, of some tracks. It's just I'm too busy slash lazy to to work that out. Yeah. Well, it took me a while to convince you guys to actually play to the metronome on the latest recording. Yeah. So you know, I, I, you know, there's there's that. So we, we'd have to you know bring that on stage, and that, that'd be a whole yeah that'd be a whole thing. And I, I, I know we're saying this to you you. I know you, you guys have like a very uh, yeah. cinematic experience. Yeah. With, with you, it's gone right. Yeah. I um yeah. So m when when COVID hit. Uh, and we'll get into everybody's experience during COVID. Um, when COVID hit and I, they like, you know, locked me in my house for 45 days, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in three bands and I've got a vault of music that I, I write all the time. I used to write all the time. I haven't written a lot lately, but um, I went through my vault of music of all the stuff that wasn't uh, good for this band or that band. And I was like, I'm going to do my band. And, so I figured I wanted to bring anything that I could record in my studio. I should be able to perform it live, and and that's kind of how the how that happened. And then I put together, you know, the in ear rack is is the key so that everybody can hear. We all he have a metronome, you know. We've all got the click track. We've all got, you know, uh, you know the some backing tracks of everything that I recorded here uh, is that I can't play live is is what plays behind us. So. Uh, it's interesting for sure, but, um, cool. but yeah. Um, so Chris, your, your, yeah. your background on bass and, and when did you get started and what, what led you to, to the bass? It was really, uh, I mean, the, the band that Frank and I were in many, many years ago, I played guitar mm -hmm. and, uh, and sang, no, I did not play bass, uh, then, we, you know, after that ended in round 96, I went many years, you know, with small children, not really doing anything uh, outside of my own home with music. Um, and then around 2010 or so, started playing covers again with this guy. And what was needed was a bass player. And I said, you know what? Sure, I'll pick up a bass and, yeah. and, and fill, fill the need. And I've been doing that, you know, ever since. Actually, it was slightly different than that. I proposed to him, <laughs> okay. being that he was a guitar player, yeah. and we were looking for a uh, bass, I and mean, we needed somebody to fill in the bass spot. I suggested to him, hey, why don't you join the cover band, and we split 50-50 the guitar and bass. Really? Yes. I forgot that. Okay. And, and uh, he's, he, he ended up enjoying the bass a lot, and he said, you know what? You go ahead and play guitar, I'll play the bass. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I still like playing guitar, but I, uh, I've grown to really enjoy playing the bass. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. And he does write guitar parts for the songs too. Sure, sure. sure. Um, well, you know, it's funny that you say that, 
Chris because uh, I was doing a, a, a church gig for 15 years, and <clears throat> early on they were like, "We need a bass player. We need a bass player." And I'm like, "I can play whole notes. I can play half notes. I can do this." And uh, I started playing bass, and I, I, I really turned out to enjoy the the different part of my musical mind of syncing up with the kick drum and and listening to the rhythm and 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 being cohesive with the song rhythmically as opposed to 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 melody and and all that kind of stuff so i yeah. i i did the same thing i really enjoyed what type of bass do you do you uh play what's your uh, what's, well, your, what's yeah, your rig you'll, you'll discover them i am the last i'm the most furthest from a gear guy that you're gonna meet uh so i the nicest bass I own is like a, a Yamaha broad bass. Um, but then I also play a like $150 like starter sure. uh, Yamaha bass yeah. um, through an, an orange head. And uh, I'm quite happy with uh, right. what I get out of that. You got a lot of compliments the last gig, actually. After the first bass player with his giant Ampeg, and that was a beautiful bass, by the way, that he had. Yeah, yeah. And but the sound was like muddy and not very good. And Chris has this little uh, orange what's, what's the, bass. What's the name I brought from Jersey? And, and a 210. A 210 yeah. gallon Kruger that I brought from Jersey. Yeah. I was like, hey, you want this? I have no use for it. I mean, yeah. It sounds great. To me. It sounds yeah. great. And the other thing is, you know, bass especially, it's going through a DI right. for the house anyway. So, yeah. Well, how it's that quality was, over quantity is my yeah. That was going to be my next so, question: Is are you using a like a preamp on the floor to go de, to, um, ec, you know direct out XLR, or is uh, does the orange head have a, a DI on it or? What? The, or the head has its own DI on it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what's that's what's heading you know into the into the board. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, just, just much like the gear, I mean, my, my sound is also you know fairly straightforward. Yeah. There are a few songs I'd go for like a a, a dirty sound. And He's not about the big mom. I, yes, well, I yeah. was big, but I mean, other than that, I mean, I'm I'm a very minimalist yeah. sort of guy. I'd ra I'd ra I'm much more about the song writing sure. than I am about the yeah. Uh, yeah, you can you can focus you can focus on tones and and dirt and and those types of things when you when you're going in, into the studio to to lay the track down. Uh, you know, you got to find a tone that you're going to be happy with five years from now, which is hard to do. But it's um, very hard to do. Yeah. But did did was that a little uh, big muff? Did I hear big muff? Um, yeah, I have a big muff for for certain you know uh, passages. Uh, it doesn't come up frequently in our in our tunes, mm -hmm. but there's a couple of places where where it fits in nicely. Okay, so you you have a pedal board with a tuner and a and a distortion on it and, and something minimal that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Very simple. Uh. Well, that that leaves you, Frank. What 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 gear? What I I think, I think I saw some Floyd Rose type guitars. Uh. What are you playing? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, guitar wise, I uh, I used to be many years ago an Ibanez guy. Oh yeah. And then I visited Fender headquarters mm -hmm. because a friend of mine went to college with one of their AR guys. And fell in love with Charvels. Oh, that's what I saw, yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, he took me to one of his employees' office, and they have guitars on every office. Yeah. And this guy had the $28,000 Frankenstrat replica. Oh, yeah. Uh, that Eddie himself couldn't tell apart from his. Right, yeah. And I played it, and I love the action of it. I love, I love the way the neck felt on it. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to Charvel. So I have uh, three Charvels, and for amplification, uh, EVH amps. Okay, so you're using a tube, uh, 50 watt EVH. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my my for my stage uh, setup, I use a 50 watt, but yeah. I also have a 15 watt. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, but I haven't had any issues with uh, the 50 being too much for any of the venues. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's that's just gonna be always a constant battle between stage volume and sound guys it goes yeah. back to the beginning of of, of time <laughs> hey could you yeah. could you imagine have been the sound guy for Jimi hendrix telling him to turn down <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly yeah or, or cream back in the day i don't i don't yeah, think exactly yeah. i don't think they cared you know but uh you brought up something earlier about tinnitus and uh i'm 
I, I suffer with it right now in with my in ears. I just have this wonderful high frequency hiss going on. Um, and if I'd if I'd have known when I was 19 or 20 years old not, that I didn't have to really push my 100 watt Marshalls, um, and I think also cymbals. I don't know how drummers back to drums. I don't know how you can play drums with the cymbal crashes if you don't have ear protection from day one, how you don't get tinnitus. Yeah. Well, yeah, I probably, I don't know. I mean, when you're young and stupid, you know, I didn't start till I was like 18. And I think probably for the first, I don't know, maybe three years, yeah. you know, just, oh yeah, oh, you know, and, and I probably, I probably had sticks about yay big, yeah. you know, diameter and beat the shit of all of them, you know, and, yeah. And, uh, but I think after, from that point on, it was always like some sort of earplug or like now I play with in ears. So of course it, you know, it deadens all that. So now the challenge now is you got to get some of that through the actual mix because you can't hear the instrument as well, you yeah. know, but it kills the cymbals at least because that's what will really destroy your ear. Yeah. I, I think that for me is kind of, I'm obviously going to blame it on the drummer. I mean, it couldn't be my guitar, <laughs> <laughs> you yep. know? Uh, yeah, the the symbols have got to be the most, the worst offender. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it it actually that's the frequency I hear uh, at twenty four seven. Um, yeah, but uh, so uh, now is it a is it a Zildjian frequency that you hear, or is I, it more like a Sabian? I, you know, I think it's a Pisces. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should I should. Oh, that, yeah. Then that would really annoy me if I was hearing a Pisces all yeah. the time. I'm like, oh, God. yeah. I should do a class action lawsuit on symbol companies and see what happens. That'd be funny. Um, so, uh, do you guys, uh, we're going to play a track here in a, in a minute. And, um, when you guys record, are you doing it in a studio? Are you doing it at home? How's that process work? Um, well, this, this track that, that, that you're going to play, we, we, we recorded in a, in a, in a home studio, uh, Called Burden Studios, uh, kind of in the Lawrenceville area. Um, the guy named Drew Gerheim, mm -hmm. great dude, uh, very casual uh, atmosphere. Yeah. Um, spread it out over a couple of weekends. Um, just very easy to work with, yeah. and really, really happy with the with the end product. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of drum kit in the uh, living room sort of vibe setup. Yeah. You know. Well, that's that's kind of the nice thing about the you know the technology has brought us to a place where you know you're not paying uh 65 dollars a minute uh for two inch tape and 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 got to uh -huh. get it in one take or two takes or three takes and then pick the best one it's not like that when you guys did this did you um did you put down your drum tracks and and and, and scratch track to follow or or did you guys as a power trio uh, go in and, and throw it down and then just polish up different spots no we, we went in and um so we put it to a click and the three of us then just laid down scratch tracks mm -hmm. and then you know I, I think you guys came in first right yeah your stuff so then they, yeah. they came in and did bass and guitar and the vocals and then i did the drums as the last bit yeah um so yeah we had the you know scratch track with the metronome and and the whole bit so yeah it worked pretty well yeah um uh, uh frank when you did the when you did the studio stuff were you still using the tube amps in the studio or did you get a chance to try a kemper or a fractal or anything like that uh, not really he uh he might my uh my tube amp yeah but he also ran a uh clean signal through uh through a modeler that he has on his uh laptop yep and yeah he combined the two signals. yeah and that's actually a good point um to bring up for any any young artists that are you know learning getting into this game uh if you are retracting especially and i mean i mostly know about guitar because that's what i play but uh if you're tracking your your instrument if you can pull off um a dry raw uh signal and record that to an alternate track uh you can do so much with uh reamping which would be um you know sending it back out of the system and running it through maybe this black star or a, a you know a different amp and actually miking that and re-recording it with that tone on it, or you can use a plug-in like a positive grid, um, anything like that where you, you know it, the choices of tones to find on those types of, of things are it's unreal 
what you can play around with, you know? Yeah, that's why he did a plugin on top of the uh, app signal. Yeah. Well, did. so then, of course, what, what kind of annoyed me is we I lay down all the stuff, and, of course, I changed my heads. I wow. tuned them all up. I've got a DW collector series kit, and I'm all that. So then when we're done, he goes, oh, no, I don't use your kick drum. <laughs> He's like, no, no way. I use a modeling kick drum. And I don't yeah. do that for the tongues either. I'm like, dude, yeah. I should have just put, I should have had like quick, Quaker boxes yeah. on there just to pick yeah. up the actual like hit. You know, I was like, I was yeah. all disappointed. Well, it's just yeah. the signal. Yeah. All he was after. So, so what he did there was he triggered you. Uh, he, yeah, exactly. He, yeah, so he, he, he's just. He's just taking the trigger signal. Literally and psychologically. Yeah. yeah. He, he definitely triggered me. Yeah. He definitely triggered me. That's so, funny. No, yeah. No, I mean, he was really just looking for the trigger, trigger signal and the velocity and then, you know, dial in a tom. Yeah. He was happy with. And, you know, it turned out pretty well. I think next time I'll be like, I want to hear the real tom. Yeah. Let me choose. Well, I was <laughs> I was going to say, just previewing the track, I, I thought the drums sounded, you know, huge. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's take a listen to the track and uh this is uh Never Be Free by Against the Fold. Cool. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs>
Wow, dudes. Hey, uh, I, I love that track. Uh, Thank you. I really, I really think the production on it sounds great. Um, I like the kick, the toms. I like the snare. That's a, the natural snare, right? So the, yeah, it depends. So he, he did a really nice job with it because actually at the at the lower velocities, it's a hundred percent natural snare. So when yeah. you hear the that, 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 yeah. that, 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 that's just the natural snare. But then as the velocity goes up. Yeah. It lays in the other one. Yeah. And I think I think he did an awesome job with yeah. the snare. That, that all sounds great. The note that I had on here was like the <clears throat> halftime, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh when you guys are going, uh you're you're riff heavy, you're going, you're going, and then boom, it just floats, goes into the floating section. Uh I I, I think it sounds great. I think our bands which would should play some gigs together. Um because uh, let's do it. You know, it, it's right right up right up the alley of if they're going to like your stuff, they're going to like our stuff kind of a thing, you know? Nice. Um, the other thing that I, that, that I noticed great, great. Uh, I hear a nice thick guitar tone over here and then there's an accent guitar going on over here. Uh, uh, the guitar tones are all there The bass, bass. It all sounds great, man. I, whoever did this knew what they were doing and the song was written great. Now you did get me with the curveball with the last 18 seconds. I thought the song was over and then all of a sudden it goes into it goes into another uh, section there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I started to fade it. I'm like, whoa, not fading yet. So um Yeah. But it yeah. tends to do that. Like we play it live, you know, it people clap, people yeah. cheer, it's like wait, wait. And then off goes. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I wait for people to start clapping before I start that section, to be honest. So uh, Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to do it for sure. One of these days is going to be like a game of chicken. They're just not going to clap, but we're going to have to stare down. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be the end of the set. He'll still be holding the guitar at the ready, just staring at everyone down. <laughs> well, that, actually, that's a good point. Um, you know, that gives you, when you're not tied... Uh, like I'm tied to uh, to a, 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 essentially a, a simpty timeline that I can't I can't stray from. Uh, right, right. Playing the way you you guys are playing, you have the ability to do that. Read the crowd, hold, 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 and then go go for the finale of the song. That that's that's the advantage of doing it the way you're doing it for sure. You know. Um, yeah, I, I, I had both. We're I mean we're not. An improvisational band, yeah. Uh, by any stretch of the, the the imagination, but it's nice in some small ways to do a little bit of yeah. in the moment changes. Yeah, um, I uh, I noticed uh, that um, fall to pieces type of bass line, you know that. Uh, I, I I don't I never did that playing bass. I never got that aggressive. I was just playing at church. But how, are you just doing hammer ons? Kind of a hammer on kind of. Yeah, that down? segment is is a hammer on, and it's a you know it's a naked homage to Tool. Yeah. Um, which is definitely one of the one of the many influences. Yeah. On, on I'd say all of us. That's yeah, one that we share. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things that we all have our distinct uh, pieces on. Um, this track doesn't as much show it, but I mean, there's some some material. Even this has it. You know, the vocal harmonies sort of, certainly matter. You know, King's X is another big influence as well. Um, old school Rush, yeah, is in there. So yeah. Um, so the track "Keep On." Um, I want to take a look. That first song was so good. I, I want to hear another one. Um, All right, sure. Uh, this is, I'd say this is pretty different. It's more groovy, bluesy. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. Kind of, it's got the big muff. Yeah, so. we, we go off, yes. we kind of go, we kind of go off during the instrumental section. You get to hear him do this little mega he, didn't, he doesn't have a solo in the first song, but he, he gets to go off. Yeah. He gets to go off in this one. In this yeah. One. Well, it's interesting you say that uh, not having a solo in, in a song. Yeah. We, we just got done, Hope Sanker just got done recording um, an EP and, uh, and there's one song that I was like, guys, it doesn't need a solo. The rhythm parts are intricate enough that it, you know, it, it every song doesn't have to have the solo. I mean, they, they're fun to play, but they're also, you got to remember, you know, I try to play my solos that I record on that record, um, just like the record every time I play it, you know, it's a written part and I spent mm -hmm. time writing it. So I, I try to, I try to keep to the script on that, but, uh, 
Uh, but that track that we just heard is um, uh, there's so much intricate riffing going on that you know I'm I'm sure that got uh, you know get got the solo uh, type of I need to solo I don't you know need to because I just riffed all day that was intricate. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 plenty going on there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a listen to um, "Keep On." This is against the fold. Keep on, um, and uh, it recorded at the same place, or yeah, what? yes, part of the same session. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Keep on.
Yes, now that has definitely got a King's X vibe there. Uh, uh, another great track, guys. Um, really, uh, really love the fact that it's it's like. I'm not writing this for a record label that wants a three minute song. I'm not writing this for anybody else but us. And, and it was what, like four and a half minutes of, of groove and then rocking out in the middle and then back to some groove. Um, notes that I had on this one is the drum fill at one minute is, is insane. <laughs> it's like, like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but you, you going off on the drums, nice long. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Right at the beginning of the song at one minute, um, the vocal harmonies definitely got that King's X. There's a King's X kind of vibe there for sure. Uh, we're big fans of King's X. Um, there's a descending counter guitar part uh, in the pre-choruses leading into the choruses. The first time it was, it was doing a descending thing, it felt like it was in my right ear. And then the second time the pre-chorus came around, it felt like it was in the left ear. Was that, was, was that am I correct in hearing that? Or was That's it intentional? I don't even, I don't recall that. I, I mean, it, it, I don't often listen to it. I haven't listened to it too many times with headphones. So I recommend that it. might be a little Easter egg that Drew put in there that yeah. I, I wasn't even aware of. Well, yeah. I, I don't think, we didn't give him much direction really on, so the first mix he really kind of just wanted to do on his own and then yeah. show it to us. Yeah. And so most of the panning stuff, he just kind of took liberties and, and, and I don't think, there might have been one or two where you're like, hey, put it more to the center. But most of it was kind of him going, wow, that'd be cool if this is, you know, yeah. off to the left and then the bass and drums come in on the, on the right hand side yeah. or vice versa or whatever. Uh, the, the, the use of panning in, in both of the tracks, uh, it's really done well. Um, like there'll be a, a heavy part of a guitar riff here and then a, a, an accent track kind of over here on this side. Uh, very, really good use of, of that. Um, at three minutes and 33 seconds coming the outro of the guitar solo, the climb, the solo outro climb exclamation That's point, my favorite part. exclamation point is in my notes here. And, and that was, that was ripping. Uh, Frank, you killed that. You mean the main solo? Yeah. The main solo. I believe that's the. <laughs> yeah. Why borrow Dave Mustaine on that one? Yeah. Oh, you made a mistake on it. No, I borrowed from Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Oh, yeah, 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 Dave Mustaine, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, we're all influenced by who we grew up with listening to, and it's that's the beauty of, you know, having guitar heroes and stuff. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, as long as, as long as you're not literally playing the eruption melody, but you're <laughs> using that right. technique, I, th <laughs> I think it's okay, you know. Nobody's playing anything original. It's been around too long, you know. Um, yeah, it's yeah, exa exactly. You, it's, it's not that you're going to come up with something that's completely brand new. It's yeah, if you can put your own spin on it, and well, case in point, they just yeah. exonerated Ed Sheeran. We were just chatting about oh, that. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess, I'm following free and clear. I get. I guess you can't patent, you know, a three chord progression. Yeah, you know? which which we'd all be in jail. Exactly. You know, yeah. we we'd all. Um, I. I knew about that was going on. Um, I had a conversation with a buddy, a musician buddy of mine, and he's like, I don't, I don't think, I don't hear it. You know, Stairway to Heaven was way more of a ripoff. Days to Confused was way more of a ripoff uh, than, you know, yeah. Ed did. Vanilla Ice. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I added, I added a dun da da dun da and it's, it's different. <laughs> That's um, a great clip, by the way. He's like, no, theirs is dun 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 dun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mine goes. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's gonna be a great way to meet your idols. Yeah. I mean, let's say you wanted to meet Van Halen, just. Yeah. Steal of their songs and you can meet them in court. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my favorite court moments are actually Rob Halford singing. And because this happened in Reno, Nevada, where I where I grew up. Yeah. And that's where they were taking him to court for unfortunately the you know, the kid that committed suicide. And so they're in court and they're having Rob Halford sing. Yeah, you know, like, that he's got these little things and they're like, what is that? Yeah. What is that little exhale you do? And he's like, I don't know. It's how I bloody sing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. these crazy yeah. clips. Like, are you kidding? Oh my god. Yeah, That's it's unfortunate uh, that you know that was back in the uh, I think Tipper Gore, uh, trying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, D. Snyder was in. I mean, D. Snyder in in Congress testifying about his playing music uh, might not have been the best best representation, but uh, you know it was pretty crazy that. He, I, if I recall, he was actually uh, quite, quite an eloquent uh, yeah. defender. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Once he tied it back in the in, in this and took off the crazy makeup, I'm sure. Yeah, he can. Yeah. He, he can be, be quite articulate. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he's in the news right now, so he's still around. Um, yeah. Cool. So, so actually, cool. coincidentally, one of the first metal shows I ever went to was right after Judas Priest got let go. From that, they played a show in Reno on the Painkiller tour, mm. and Megadeth and Testament opened for them. It was a killer show. Okay. So talk about stage. You mean Rob got let go. Or well, no, like Judas Priest because they were kind of suing the band well, oh, for okay. you know, these subliminal messages or whatever. But the first show they played was in Reno right after that. You know, okay. as part of the Painkiller tour. Oh my God, what a show! That yeah. was fantastic. I bet they had a little something to to say. You know, something to prove. Um, on, on keep on one last note I had on that song, um, there's, there's a breakdown, there's a breakdown at four minutes, uh, before the outro. Um, and it, 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 it breaks down, it gets kind of quiet. And I, I, I heard some like radio noise or some talking in the background or something. I, I actually looked around like, where's that noise coming from? Uh, is there something going on in the, in the deep background during that breakdown. It's funny you say that because I noticed the same thing yeah. when we got the mix or some of the early iterations of the mix. And and I kind of like it. It's like, oh, actually that kind of works. It's cool, but we didn't intend that. Yeah. And I asked these guys and Drew and no one was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So thank you for helping me realize. So that now was crazy. Crazy. I, I got to listen for it. Now. I've never heard the, the one, the one that these guys couldn't hear that I could hear. So Drew, Drew calls me and he goes, I think we're going to have to retract the guitars. I got to tell Frank uh, on the other song that we did in the same session. And I go, why? He goes, I'm, I'm picking up a metronome in the beginning. Yeah. And so I, I listen, I listen to it and I'm like, Oh man, I totally hear it. Yeah. And then he gets it to these guys and they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You can't hear that. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, so yeah. So, so that was an unintentional, nice little mysterious thing that yeah. leaked in there. Apparently. Any, any idea what it is? I really don't know. I don't know. If, I mean, I guess occasionally there's been, you know, you can get some strange signal transference or something. I think it's aliens communicating with us. Yes. I it could be that. Yeah. Or that. Yeah. Yeah. Not, he's not saying it's aliens. Yeah. But it's a Hawkins yeah. razor. The most simple explanation. Yeah. That, that has to be it. Yeah. It's funny you talk about aliens. I just watched a, a documentary from this James Fox guy about uh, aliens crash landing in Brazil. And now I'm like, looking over my shoulder like man they're here <laughs> <laughs> they're all here um yeah great song guys uh i would highly recommend continuing to go back to that guy and and finishing up more ideas and 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 keeping that keeping that chemistry going because it sounds right and tight on my end uh and awesome. as you can tell I, i'm yeah. we've got a whole we got a batch of new tunes that yeah. were yeah, we got about three that need recording yeah yeah, yeah at some point well, as you can tell, I, I'm listening closely to to what's going on there. And uh, the other thing I will say that about your sound that I really like is this: um, it's actual singing and not, uh, you know, it's not it's not screaming stuff. There's there's actually melody and there's harmonies on background vocals and stuff like that. So um, I, I like it. You guys are kicking it. Thank cool. You. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, so. Uh, you know, is that an option to continue to go back to that guy? Uh, what was his name? 
Shout him out. Uh, Drew, Drew. Hunge. Drew's getting getting a lot of love here. We yeah. have, he'll be excited <laughs> to see this. Um, yeah, we'll have to call Drew after this, dude. You gotta yeah. watch your podcast. Yeah, uh, shout out. I, I, I assume so, unless he decides to to stop running his studio. Yeah. I think he had slowed, you know, when we reached out to him, we, we actually got to know him through, we're friendly with um, a couple of members of a, a much heavier band, but tremendously great musicians called Subdivisions. Mm, subdivisions. Um, you should, uh, you should check them out. Um, they're, they're great. Um, we're friendly with them. They had previously recorded with him. Yeah. And that's how we got, you know, connected with him. Um and when we reached out to him, he said, well, he had kind of slowed down and wasn't doing as much recording, but he liked what he heard and was willing to willing to keep going. And I, I, my understanding is he's done some other other bands yeah. since us. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I would strike while the iron's hot for sure um, and get back in with him and and, you know, finish up what you have. How many how, how many new songs do you have? Do you have enough for an EP or, or what do you have there? Is, uh, I mean, songs that we haven't recorded, or yeah. just like all together. Yeah. Could... yeah well, no. What, what if you were to do a record with 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 this lineup and with this material and as being the first two songs? Ah, uh, right, right. How many more would you um, have for like a record there? I don't know. Maybe. Well, so the new incarnation. Well, the one tune we're not playing is called "The Question" from the same session. Mm-hmm. Um, another great tune, catchy. Probably one of the more catchy like vocal things that, that Chris has written. So that's three, and then we've got another three. Um, we got one. Pretty much in one. The we're season. finally polishing up and ready to play live. I think next show. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. we'll see. It's been it's been difficult to get that one together. Some crazy timing things and whatever. But um, but yeah, like three more. So we probably have six in the same kind of session feel, if you will. Okay. There's, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's other tunes that we've never recorded that we do play that you know if, if we were trying to pursue you know a full-length album we, we certainly have the material to do it with yeah it's just at that point it's uh you know is it cost effective uh it costs yeah, i mean i'll be honest i mean we we just we go in periodically and we'll record some tunes and we, and we just kind of release them one at a time i'm not sure that's yeah th- th- having an album is yeah. a nice sort of item but yeah i don't know that people consume music that way that much anymore certainly not on the local it probably, level. It probably makes us just seem old when we say we're going to record an album yeah like, people don't do that it's a, it's well very, we just kind of release a song at a time yeah uh, uh so we can we can kind of milk it that way right you release a song and then a few months down the road release another one yeah other than just we need it, everything at once yeah it's, it's funny you say that because hope sanker we just like i said just finished up an ep and uh you know, we had done two two records, full length records prior to that. Uh, we've been together for a long time, and um, and this time we're like, well, you know, maybe we, we just do singles. I mean, it's a different landscape so much today. I noticed, um, you know, I'm, I'm 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 listening to you on Spotify. You've got great artwork. You know, you got great logo. Um, you know, is that the, is that where we're at, guys? We just do a song. You know maybe record six songs and do okay we got six months worth of material or or you know a year and a half or whatever however we spread these out Uh, but is that is that where we're at musically now i mean as a consumer i like getting a, a an album and immersing myself in it particularly you know albums that are really well conceived where that where like literally the sequence matters yeah um but for us, I mean, we're, we're trying to use it as like a, you know, a marketing device to, to have something fresh and exciting on a, on a more regular cadence yeah. is kind of what we're, yeah. is, is how, as how we've gone about it. I don't know. I should probably talk to my, my, my teenage sons to yeah. understand how they're consuming music to really answer that better, right? Yeah. Well, they're consuming it at 35 seconds. Uh, a, a, ch- a shot on TikTok. Oh, on TikTok. I know. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you, true. Well, yeah. even on Spotify, my, my son, he, I, I keep telling him, like, do you ever listen to a whole song? Right. Like, no, like a minute and a half in, click next track. I'm like, oh my God, you're driving me crazy. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's even worse than you thought. It, it is. is worse than you thought. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, uh, 
you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm old. I'm going to be 54, 53, 54 this year. And, uh, you know, the way we used to do it is not how it's done now. Uh, I mean, I'm lucky enough to figure it out how to do, uh, video conferencing and, and record all this type type stuff. But as far as the marketing and, um, you know, the streaming services and, and all that kind of stuff, I, I just throw my hands up and like, I just want to be an artist. I, I don't know how to market all this stuff. I got a lot of good stuff. What do I do with it? You know? So if there's anybody yeah. out there that can help me, please help. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, you're doing something that you love and that's sort of how we look at it too. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, what, however small or large the audience is, you know, getting, you know, sharing it with other people is yeah. what we're, we're, we're trying to do to the extent that we can. Yeah. We're not looking to make it. We're yeah. just trying to. I think we're all past that. No. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're just, just trying to find, you know, people who enjoy what we're doing. Yeah. To share it with. Them. Yeah. I think my last moment of trying to make it, this was, when was it? 2000. So I was in Philly and I was in a trip hop band called Sweetie. Yep. And so a lot of like, so it was all like, uh, you know, some of the drums was coming out of the, uh, you know, the keyboard, you know, and so, and so I'm playing with the click track, really cool band, great singer. And I'll never forget this. I'm downstairs. Great gig. We had like 300 people were there and I'm in the dressing room downstairs. It's like 11 o'clock. We haven't even gone on yet. Other members are upstairs schmoozing and I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna try to do this for the next 15 years trying to, yeah. you know, trying to quote make it, you know, and it's 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 tough, man. You gotta really put in the the road time and everything to try to get a following and you know. Yeah. And even even that level, that success doesn't mean what it now, what it used to. Right. Right. I mean yeah. even, you know, many bands that are, you know touring nationally and internationally unless they're mega huge they're living hand to mouth look at these legend sure yeah love those guys and they're scraping by and they have day jobs too in between tours and other stuff which what band was that which band there's a band called he is legend out of wilmington north carolina i don't know if you're familiar with them but uh i'm a huge fan and been turning this guy on to him yeah in a lot of recent years yeah well, it, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I, my, my, my dad was a musician. My mom was a musician. I, like I said, don't have a choice. I have to play, but there is one bit of advice that don't quit your day job, do whatever you want, <laughs> do whatever you yep. want, play as much as you want. But you know, it's, it's less than winning a lottery, uh, chances of getting a record deal and being the stones. You know, so, yep. you know, what, what do you do with that? You just, you know, like you said, uh, you play it because you love to play it. Um, and that's, that's the thing. Uh, who did your artwork and, and graphics and who, who, who got you on the music distribution to get you on Spotify and that kind of, and that kind of thing? Who's doing that kind of work? I, I kind of take care of those things. I mean, uh, all of the artwork on all the singles that you'll see on Spotify is uh, really, you know, royalty free images yeah. that I like hunt the internet for yeah. through like, you know, Pexels and Pixabay and these various like royalty free sites. The, 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 the logo is really just a, a an interesting looking font, yep. you know, with, with a little, um, shadow effect on it. Yeah. And then just, you know, a couple of combinations like this. Yeah. And, and some pretty simple software and, you got something that looks fairly yeah. pro. Yeah, you say that, but um, as a guy that that does all the graphics for the show and all, and you know, it's it takes a special. I mean, it's another software to learn. It's another. There's there's so much work that goes into, uh, you know, finding a font, making a decision, putting a putting a shading on it, making it 3D. Uh, you know, you can go down so many rabbit holes. And my ADD is like, I'll go down them all. Uh, before before <laughs> yeah. I decide what which one I want, but um, you know, it's definitely another talent needed outside of the talent of actually playing and writing a song. Um, 
which brings me to the question, uh, outside of music, uh, Frank, do you have an, uh, a talent outside of music? Are you an artist or do you, do, what do you do outside of this that, uh, well, I will say uh, talent as much as hobbies. Yeah. Um, I say about five weekends, three to five weekends a year, I go run a car at a racetrack. Oh, nice. What kind? Dirt? A, no, I like uh, road courses, oh, like okay. Road Atlanta or Roebling. It's a 95 M3 BMW. Sure, sure. With a roll bar and uh, suspension upgrades. Nice. And brake upgrades, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you need brakes on a road course. It's not NASCAR. Well, I don't, I don't say upgrades as much as just better brake, braking components, race pads. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, drill, drilled and slotted rotors, that kind of thing. Do you do, you do the mechanic work on your, on your cars? Uh, a few things, maybe change brakes or change brake fluid, but for anything else, I mean, being this age is hard to like do the contortionist yeah. act that you have to do to work on a car these days. Yeah. I have the car work on. Yeah. And plus but I don't I don't take it to the extreme that some people do. So I, I, I don't treat it as uh I don't run it to the limit as much as everybody else would. Yeah, you just go out there and get a couple of G forces going around turns and you know have some fun. Uh plus you gotta be careful when you're mechanicing on cars and stuff. I don't know about you, but I, my hands are a wreck whenever I do that kind of stuff, and they're kind of important to play an instrument. That's that's a good point. Yes, you know. So, uh, Paul, what about you outside of uh, outside of music? You know, you got a talent out there. Oh, geez, I don't know. It's out, outside of the fifty-five hour work weeks plus the band. There's like yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. family time pretty much after that. Now, I mean, for me, it's always been um, music. I mean, I watch a ton of Premier League soccer. Oh, okay. Um, Who's your team? Other hobby. I follow a team. I, I got to go to London a couple times and, you know, saw this club and sort of fell in love with it. So I, I watch probably way more, way more Premier League football than it's, uh, than it's healthy. Yeah. Who's your team? Um, how many yeah. games a weekend will you say you watch? How many games? Probably six a weekend. Okay. No. That's a lot. That's yeah. A, not, yeah okay. not, what's your team? What's your team? Crystal Palace. Oh, okay. I'm familiar with them. My uh, brother in law is a huge. West Ham guy and it's come on you irons every weekend you know it's it's crazy. <laughs> um have you That's a, he's kind of in the same boat I am. It's it's like it's hard. Yeah. To, you know to be there kind of middle of the table are you still going to make it? You got to stay up. It, yeah. But when it, when I went to London I was there and I'm like, you know, I'm a really big soccer fan. I did, and that's the time I wasn't watching much and I was like, well, who's playing? And it was like a Champions League weekend and I couldn't get any tickets. And I'm like, all right, well, let me go to the next league down. And I just like, you know, just picked. Yeah. And it just so happened. So I went down and saw them. And it just so happened that was the year they got promoted. Yeah. So now it's been like 10 years. So I've just been following them ever since. Yeah. And now when they got promoted, they can be demoted, right? I don't understand how it all works, but I think, I think. Well, so let, let me put it this way. If they had the same system here, we would have never seen the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns ever again. Right. Because <laughs> they would have been relegated to the lower league and they probably would have never made their way back up. Yeah, yeah. Every year it's three teams, three teams come up from the league before and three teams go down. Yeah. And you don't want to go down because that's that's basically like millions of dollars coming out of your, you sure. know, yeah. your, your club because you lose the TV rights, you lose, yeah. you know. It's yeah, it's it's a but I like that system because it's I do you know, too. Because it, if you suck, it pays. The, hey, the Buccaneers in the what 80s, 90s with that 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 orange and light blue scheme, <laughs> they, they would have been playing college football at some point, exactly. Yeah, you know, that's crazy, Chris. Uh, outside, uh, obviously, you're you're doing you're into you know some marketing or have the ability to kind of to to do that. Every band, oh, I, I do it. But you know, for the band, I, I, I don't do, I don't, I don't consider it fun. <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, hobby. So, um, I've had some shoulder injuries in the, in recent years, but for a lot, a lot of years, and I intend to get back into it. I, I'm, I enjoy whitewater kayaking. Oh yeah. That's something I've done, uh, for a long time. And, uh, uh that's yeah, super, super enjoyable thrill ride yeah uh, what type of kayak are you are you a perception kayak guy i used to do some uh kayaking and back in high school as well 
I was oh, always. Oh, wow. Uh, my <laughs> very first bow was a perception. Yeah, I had a dagger. Uh, now they're not making new perceptions anymore. So. Oh, really? No, no. Oh, I... That's a brand that's kind of a, a historic brand now. Wow. So, yeah, I used yeah, to have so... a dagger. And uh, that thing, you could you could roll that thing like, it was pretty cool. Oh, nice, nice. Wow. Yeah. Uh, um, wow. How about that? Uh, a lot of comment. Um, dagger, Dagger's actually making some fantastic boats right now. I, I might even... I might even uh, trade in one of my boats for a dagger this this season. We'll see. Now, now around here, uh, the only place around here would have been the uh, the the river that they built for the Olympics to to go and and get on. I mean, I used to do it in North Carolina on the French Broad and and some. Oh wow, wow, so, it's a small small world. How about that? Yeah. So, uh, you mean the Ukoi? Yeah. Up in Tennessee. Well, the, yeah, where they were doing the where it was it's controlled. They actually. They can control it and, and and make it class threes. They can make it class fives, and it, it might have been a, a, up in Tennessee, but it was north of where I'm at now. Oh, well, back in '96, when Atlanta hosted the Olympics, yeah. the, the whitewater events they did up at the Ocoee. Okay, yeah. And they and they had kind of rearranged the rocks. Yeah, it was still natural. Yeah, it wasn't one of those totally like man-made things where it's like looks like Legos. Yeah, in a, in a cement ditch. Like you, when you see it in some other other places when they have the Olympics, yeah. it was actual rocks. But yeah, I mean that's um, that is probably the that river is the summertime like camp out. You go, you know, the Ukoi is running every every weekend all summer long, and it's a it's a party. Yeah, it's a good and, time. but they can control how aggressive it is, right? I mean. To an extent, I mean, they can control the water level. I mean, yeah. it's all, it's you can't make it steeper, right? Obviously, than it is naturally, yeah. Uh, so it's you know, it's never going to be like super dangerous or crazy with yeah. like big waterfalls because yeah. it's just not there, yeah. right? But it's yeah, it's it's yeah. uh, it's it's a even when it, it's like a good mid level challenge, you know, class three plus, yeah, yeah. What's the most aggressive uh, rapid you were you've ever been in? Um, at my peak, I've done, you know, I've done some class fives. Yeah. Uh, I was probably at my best around 2017, um, before all the injuries. Yeah. Uh, uh so yeah, probably some, some class, Golly River in West Virginia and yep, West some, Virginia. some steeper things in Alabama. There's a place called Little River Canyon that's got some pretty, pretty stout runs on it. So yeah. Yeah, it's, that's a whole, that's a whole other like rabbit hole yeah, community. Sure. Yeah, that I've kind of lost touch with with my injuries, but yeah. uh, I've supplanted that with with you know focusing a lot more on the band in yeah. recent years. So. Well, uh, one thing that would be you know I, I would imagine paddling would be great therapy rehab on strength you know to strengthen your shoulders back up once you know you're allowed to do that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm like just now emerging out of that. So yeah, yeah I, I tend to start back. But I would we'll say, see. I would say go up to Lake Lanier and just be on the flat water and do that. Don't nothing dangerous, Amen. you know? Amen. Um, so, uh, what's, what's up next for you guys? Um, uh, do you, do you, where, what types of places are you playing here now in town? Do you have anything coming up? Anyone else want to take this one? Well, let you start. start. You, you're, 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 you're ready to go here. All right. Uh, <laughs> Wait, well, well, I can't take it because I never know what's going on. <laughs> I, I just have to ask Chris. Wait, where do I need to be next week? <laughs> let's make okay. this let's make this easier. Um, an easier question, real quick. Do you guys have a band calendar? That just you just a Google calendar. <laughs> that's that, funny you bring that question. That, up. They, these two have a band calendar, <laughs> um, and I just asked Chris where I need to be. Right. Yeah. So there is. We do actually have a Google calendar that we have created for this sort of thing. Yeah. And shared, but uh, anyway, so. We actually don't have any anything lined up gigs uh, in May, but uh, early uh, June fourth, we're playing uh, like a day long festival with a bunch of other bands called Machete Fest uh, oh. with our friends organized by our friend another uh, cool two piece band called Feather Machete are organizing this. <clears throat> and where's um, that? Where's that going to be? It's actually at a place called Joe's Bar and Grill. Up I know in, where that like, is. John's Creek. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be a surprisingly good stage. It, it yeah. It, it's a, yeah. it's a fun event. We played this last year mm -hmm. and there's going to be a, you know, a ton of, a ton of bands, uh, a lot of people that we're friendly with, uh, 
Dirty Holly, uh, oh, yeah. Warsaw Clinic. Yep. Um, I think Hard Spread is playing. So, so it's, it's you, a good mix. Yeah, you not guys not as metal as some of the shows that we that we end up doing. Yeah. More more towards the rock side. And I feel like we can kind of go in either direction. Yeah. Yeah. Where we sit. Yeah. So you know Amy Everly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, we had her. We had her we just, on. Uh, uh, Vice of the Vanity. Uh, uh, they've been on. Um, and it's just been it's been a lot of fun to you know part of this thing is to to get uh, you your music out and 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 find out who you guys are. But it's also part of uh, networking to where I'm meeting different bands. I'm listening to the music, and I'm I've been working on a um, getting a venue to where we can do the original music podcast showcase once a month once a okay, quarter that's awesome. once a quarter yeah. that type of thing um or meeting bands that that would be a good match with uh giza or hope's anchor or sweet soul sister whichever band um but you know that is if we don't network we're we're done uh getting a gig at a showcase venue i mean we've got one uh hope's anchor we're playing may 24th at uh at mad life and we're headlining that night and uh uh, it's it's a Wednesday night, so we're gonna get, got to get our people out on a Wednesday night. But to, in order to get a Friday, a Saturday night show in the city of Atlanta, um, it, you got to go up against um, you know an Aerosmith tribute or a, a Tom Petty tribute or a Journey it's tribute or uh, uh, all that kind of thing. The fact that you guys have decided, you know what, we're not going to do covers, so to speak, we're, as a tribute band. We're just we're going to be artists. We're going to record our own music. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, the state of the scene here in Atlanta as far as that type of thing goes? Anybody? Frank? Well, the first thing that hits me is that, you know, back in the early 90s, when, when we were doing this, you know, back in the rec room days, people who go to go to a venue to see live original music. Yep. So back then, I don't remember us having an issue with like bringing people to the show. People already show up. Yeah. I mean, we still promote it. Yeah. Back then, we would go to the venue like a couple of days, I mean, a couple of weeks before and pass out flyers. But there was a built-in market, meaning that you went to a venue and people wanted to hear new music, original music. Mm -hmm. These days, not so much. I mean, nobody actually out of the blue, well, as your musician, nobody goes out of the blue and said, hey, you know, I'm going to go watch an original band. Yeah. And I, I think that to me is the biggest thing right now. Yeah. And yeah, is at it... least in our demographic anyway. I don't know how if how much of that has to do with, you know, who our, who our audience is and, and, you know, we were we were the young people then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, but... But yeah, I mean, it's definitely been difficult. Um, I I know, um, I'll, I'll, you know, for the rock metal scene, right? There's a, you know, there's like particularly with Atlanta, it seems like you know, in town is a really hard nut to crack, and like you know, in, in getting to know the right, you know, the right people, making the right connections, and you know, the more sort of favorable, more uh, you know, we've got relationships, you know, with, with Bo at Furnace 41 on the south side and with Evan at Sweet Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Yeah, um, but like, I just you know, finding, yeah. finding a path in inside inside the perimeter is, is has been is tricky, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, we did a festival uh, at the Ten High uh, and uh, I had and I actually had Curtis Clark with uh, his band um, Animals on the Roof um on the show and, and we you know we're talking about well hey you know let's do it and he's like I, I, my venue's open to do it we just gotta you know make, make it work um and so that's that's kind of what i'm trying to do is is figure out it's a you, somebody said it's a tough nut to crack well i'm bringing a nutcracker with a sledgehammer i'm going to try to figure right. out how to do this thing um and, and get on you know proper stages have, have have you guys ever played a mad life for 37 main avondale or buford or you know that type of venue so several years like back in like 2019 we did do they were they used to have a battle of the band series at mad life we played that once yeah and that was great i mean so uh, congrats on I mean, that's a gorgeous 
stage and a be- and an amazing sound system there. So um, Wednesday might be tough, but uh, our old drummer lives in Woodstock, so we're sending him over at a minimum yeah. to, to, cool. to, to come check. Oh, we years several years ago we actually played one of those uh, things with Hope Sanker. We we're you know uh, at at the Scully Showcase at Ten High. Oh, so, okay. We were supposed to do it this year, but then he's changed the date on us. Yeah. And one of us was out of town. And we had to we had to pull out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, what what year did you guys do the music showcase? It was I, I'm thinking it might have been 2019. I believe it was 2019. Yeah. Right before yeah. COVID. Yep. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so yeah, uh, and we we did just we did you know play a sort of a an anomaly you know a gig at Ten High. Um, I'm sure. You know, you're aware of all of the drama, and I don't know any facts. I'm just, uh, uh, you know, surrounding the brewery. That brewing. We were supposed to play a show there. Yeah. And, it, and 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 Curtis, you know, was kind enough to let let the show get relocated there. And That's so we awesome. Just a yeah. couple weeks ago, we played a played a really fun show there awesome. on a Wednesday night. As oh. a matter of fact. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, uh, when we get done, um, I hang on the line because I, I would like to find out you're not the first, you're not the second, you're not the third, you're probably the fourth person to bring up that situation. And I'm kind of unaware. So I'd like to talk off the air about that. And I'd like to also uh, pick y'all's brain on, on, on some things that we can do in the city to maybe, you know, get this thing together. So we're all kind of, we're all kind of, uh, you know, able to get some proper shows on proper stages uh, because what we're doing as artists, I think is qual is high quality. You know, um, and uh, oh, yeah. and you know, and we can go from there. But um, you know, uh, so you said you got uh, uh, Joe's coming up in June, June or July. We got June fourth. June fourth. It's a Sunday. Machete. Pass. And actually, as long as we're plugging stuff, yeah. Uh, this weekend, the tickets are on sale for only five bucks a pop. It's a Cinco de Mayo special. Yeah. Try to get some early sales. There's like, uh, you go to like our social media, either our Instagram or, uh, or or our Facebook, you'll find like a link to the Ticket Leap, uh, thing. And you can choose which band you're buying on behalf of. Yeah. On. Is that is that other gig happening? The one where you got the text on the. Yeah. Uh, so in July we we were added to another like multi-band bill at. Speaking of in town at Star Bar, uh, yep. with a with a ton of bands, it's like July fourteenth, I think. Okay. All right. We're 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 in some discussions to maybe maybe try getting out of town and 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 trying some out of town shows. Yeah. Uh, maybe in, maybe down in Florida, maybe Savannah, maybe Nashville. Yeah, uh, and it's funny that you say that because um, uh, there was I don't know if it was one of my posts uh, for the for the show. Uh, but somebody uh, had com- commented that they are from Atlanta and they will never play Atlanta. They go, they go, uh, they go to all over the place else, Asheville. They'll go to, uh, you know, wherever. And he's like, yeah, with, uh, you know, Wisconsin. He said Wisconsin. Um, wow. And there's, you know, ten thousand people at at, at a, a festival that they did, uh, type of thing. So. That might not be a bad idea, uh, as far as you know. Hey, see what the see what the waters are on the other river over there. You know. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a little. I mean, for us, that's like a weekend only kind of prospect. Yeah, Wisconsin's sure. not in the cards. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, no. if it's for, if it's to play for ten thousand people, it might need. Yeah, maybe, yeah. but you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, un- understood. I would mean, make an exception for, yeah, for an audience that big. Yeah, understood on that. Um, all right. Well, you know, I enjoyed having you guys on, um, you know, definitely going to keep up with you with, with what you have going on. Um, Machete Fest, uh, June 4th at Joe's in Alpharetta. Uh, and then, uh, possibly the July 14th date at, at the star bar. Uh, but you guys got to check these guys out. I want to come out and check you guys out too. Um, uh, and see what you guys are doing live and, and how it comes across. Do. Cause, uh, the, the music's there. You guys are, nice nice dudes uh we you know <laughs> nice. we, just, we we have to get some work done and, and and get get a show together for sure yeah definitely absolutely all right guys thanks so much for having us on and thank you for what you're doing for our scene and our community by 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 
creating this podcast. It's, yeah, we appreciate it. It's yeah. really, it's making a difference. So oh, thank you. I hope so. I intend to keep doing it. Uh, I'm in my studio. It's here and I'm at home. So uh, I, I'm going to continue bringing people uh, to let them tell the stories uh, that, that, uh, that makes them do this crazy wizardry that we do, you know, and <laughs> try to figure this thing out. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so we'll, we'll check you guys out soon and uh, you know, guys go out and see them. Cool. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Cheers. thanks guys. Stay on the line. You're watching the Original Music Podcast with your hosts Raymond Hems and Rick Gathman.